Hello. Uh, it's our uh, pleasure to have with us uh, Professor B. Vishwanathan. Uh, he is a Professor Emeritus uh, here in uh, IIT Madras. Uh, he has been a faculty, he was a faculty here at IIT Madras for uh, almost 35 years, so which is a very long time, uh, much more than, you know, the uh, age of most uh, postgraduate students. Uh, he is uh, the author of numerous books. Uh, he is considered a, a very uh, important uh, expert a very well accomplished expert uh, in the areas of uh, catalysis uh, and energy, uh, amongst other areas in chemistry. Uh, so he has uh, contributed in many, many ways uh, to the development of uh, science uh, in our country. Uh, he serves in many important committees which make uh, key decisions on uh, uh, you know, what projects should be funded and so on. He has also served uh, in the uh, United Nations uh, Development Program uh, uh, Committee. Uh, for looking at you know uh, funding uh, uh, activities uh, in the area of catalysis, uh, and so he's both a national as well as an internationally uh, uh, accepted uh, expert. Uh, his areas of uh, research include electrochemistry uh, and catalysis, so that covers areas such as fuel cells, uh, batteries, uh, and hydrogen storage, just to name a few. And uh, over 35 years, uh, uh, numerous students have completed uh, uh, MS and PhD uh, under the guidance of uh, Professor B. Vishwanathan. Uh, and they hold uh, uh, fairly important positions in uh, many industries, many national organizations, uh, and so on. So it's really our uh, privilege and pleasure to have uh, Professor uh, Vishwanathan with us. And uh, I'm sure uh, the uh, views that he has, that he's going to share with us on uh, uh, research uh, in uh, chemistry uh, would definitely be very uh, uh, beneficial for uh, all of us. So thank you, sir, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, so I would like to start by asking you this. Uh, in in like in uh, engineering, uh, I'm sure even in chemistry, which has been around for uh, as a field of science for a, as a recognized field of science for a very long time, uh, are there still areas that are considered you know uh, old traditional uh, in areas of research in chemistry? Yes, there are there are few areas of chemistry which are old, but still it has a relevance to even today. This is one of them is the synthetic organic chemistry. The synthesis, synthesis is always associated with organic chemistry, but today it is no longer synthesis in organic chemistry, synthesis of chemicals. Okay. okay. So therefore the inorganic chemicals or even, even industrial chemicals, how, how they can be economically synthesized and also produced, that is the reason. Second thing is science itself today has changed its face. Science, in the conventional way, we were looking at the basic problems. Today, the science has to be delivering materials. Materials means, for example, you take a cell phone. It is a, a, a material called dielectric resonators. So this is a simple material, uh, a perovskite. Uh, so therefore, these type of materials have to be uh, designed and fabricated with very specific properties. Dielectric constant has to be seen. Uh, a specific value, the temperature quotient of dielectric constant has to be uh, very, very low, like that. So this is one of the examples. There are many, many materials. We even, for example, you take so solar cells. Solar cells today is based upon silicon solar cells. But uh, silicon being a very important material and also costly. So we, the design of new solar materials are coming. Silver based solar cells and other things are uh, cheaper than the silicon in the manufacturing process. Cost process silver may be costlier than that, but in the solar cell manufacturing thing, it can be cheaper than the uh, silicon solar cells. So therefore, any any area if you take, today, chemistry is, I will say, energy, uh, materials, and environment. These are the three main areas which are evolving in chemistry. But it doesn't mean that the, uh, customary areas of synthetic organic chemistry or synthetic inorganic chemistry, they are also still important. For example, in synthetic organic inorganic chemistry, metal organic frameworks, which is just like a palace. Okay? But the only thing is, it is a palace in, in chemicals, not a brick and mortar. So this, this type of metal organic frameworks, mesoporous materials, they are all the new generation materials. They have very great uh, advantages and also utility. They can be used in the many industries. For example, today, if you take the oil industry, it is even though oil is the, the main product and the refined oil is the main product, the conversions are taking place only because of these materials. 
previously the zeolites were used now mesoporous solids and this mofs and i think they are essentially porous solids are be used the why we are using this is now refining is based upon bottom of the barrel we are we are not taking the uh, the uh, the crude which is on the top of the layer because it is when you go to the bottom the hydrocarbons are long chain hydrocarbons therefore they have to be cracked previously it was not so long a chain but long it will previously also long chain but 30 40 carbon atoms now 100 to 200 carbon atoms so therefore the cracking or the refining okay refining means making the crude oil into useful products so this requires uh, porous solids of very high pore porosity very high pore diameters and other things these solids have to be fa fashioned designed and fabricated so this is the new generation in the same way energy conversion and energy storage these are the two new areas of i will not say new area but uh, new newly finding uh, acceptance now the, in the storage is a very important thing energy energy conversion is uh, it may be possible with by the chemist but the storage is a very important problem the, the the storage must be in such a way that the economy must be equal to the petroleum oil or petroleum price we will simply take fuel price now if it is not only fuel price but fuel for example if you will take a car it takes 50 to 100 liters of petrol so therefore if we are storing the fuel we should store equivalent to that so that you will be able to travel 500 kilometers or 600 kilometers at a stretch instead of the intermediate storage thing so this is a main area of research today in materials for energy storage in in chemistry and physics these are the two immediate areas the third, uh, the third thing is in designing these uh, solids or materials we have to know functionalize them the functionalize is for example if you take a solid there are 10 to the 15 sites out of which only 10 to the 12 or 10 to the 10 sites will be active for all of them how to make those 10 to the 10 as active sites and how to keep them in the active state this is a very very important thing because chemists are always using the uh, molar quantities molar quantities means 10 to the 23 molecules so therefore we can easily analyze them whereas when you have to analyze 10 to the 12 or 10 to the 15 your molar concentrations becomes a nanomolar picomolar or even lower than that so the analysis and identification and its structure and all those things is a very important area so this is another important area of research in uh, chemistry i will say is generally science the another development that has happened happened in the in the last 10 years is how to predict them how to a priori you have to design a material or you have to say this is the material has to be designed so this is a, this is called today is a theoretical chemistry that by by you, you can say computational chemistry whichever way you want modeling chemistry whichever way you want to do that but computation in chemistry today has taken a new turn which is called the density functional theory density functional theory takes it from the basis okay for example why hydrogen is present as h2 that is because of the oneness electron of one hydrogen combines with another oneness electron of another hydrogen making a covalent bond so the, therefore we know now hydrogen cannot exist uh, in the normal conditions as hydrogen atom but it can exist only as hydrogen molecule because the energy of the hydrogen molecule is lower than that of the energy of the hydrogen atom so the, the same way we can now make this thing for materials so the, in the olden days the number of atoms in a molecule was very small maybe 10 20 maybe 100 let us assume but today uh, for example a uh, yeah, uh, metal organic framework there will be thousands of atoms so therefore we have to minimize the energy and predict them so this is uh, is done by density functional th theory or self consistent field theory or or, or artifact calculations but uh, the recent times density functional theory has overrun all these other things because of the time involved in the computation 
and also comprehension by the chemist okay okay because uh, the, the uh, hardy park or uh, self consistent theory requires a tremendous amount of mathematics this uh, density function theory is only only gross but there are other approximations but this is the highest approximation that is possible today so this theory has taken over the thing and many chemistry laboratories are now facing the problem of how to apply this to their materials so therefore what has happened here is in the chemistry the research has taken a new turn it is not enough if you are very good synthetic or synthetic chemist you are not if it is not enough if you can to make use of the tools to an- analyze them but you should also be able to predict them okay so this is the the, the changing situation in chemistry research today okay so that's a very i mean i think a lot of detail you have told us about uh, both i think traditional areas of research and uh, where uh, you know research is heading in chemistry these days um if i go back a little and let's say look at the uh, set of students who probably uh, join uh, a chemistry department uh, for an ms degree or a phd degree and so on uh, and you have interacted with a lot of them they come from a variety of different uh, institutions where they would have done you know a bachelor's degree a, a bsc uh, a bachelor of science degree maybe in chemistry and so on and then before they join uh, here for a master's degree or a phd degree so uh, in general in the uh, in their preparation as they come in uh do you see that there are any specific significant challenges that uh, these students face when they try to join i mean when they get into a masters or a phd degree um are there certain areas that maybe their preparation in general uh, tends to be a little less uh, for which uh, uh, i mean uh, after they join they are required to pick up more uh, maybe maybe more courses or have some more preparation in those areas is there some lacuna in in terms of you know either uh, theoretical learning that they have or experimental uh, experience that they have in, in what you have seen yeah that is a necessary thing but especially with the indian context because as i told you analysis has to be at the atomic level today previously at the analysis is on the millimolar or or micromolar now it is not that way we have to single atoms have to be identified so this type of techniques that are available today for example xps or ups or any other technique we will not to go into all the details that is any uh, the analysis must be the probing system also atomic level the probed system also at atomic level so therefore this means this knowledge is not available in indian universities so therefore the uh, the students who come for research but they have to use them because if they have to be competitive in research in in today and publish in very high impact journals or impact is not a correct thing in high 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 journals then they have to be using these techniques there is no other way out out that in the same way as i told you theory also is uh, is a lacuna here because computing facilities in many universities are not so high so they cannot they might not have learned these things even if they have learned they may not be able to use them in, in the in the actual sense because the programming is a uh, is a bug bar for many of us because we are not uh, professional programming people so now what has happened is the the second thing that is i will not say the students have become uh, or the uh, the past students are brilliant the present students are not brilliant and this that is not the criterion the criterion here is today the diversions for the student is very high compared to the diversions that you and i had okay that is why the students when they are attention is diverse uh, then they they are not able to concentrate so attention spans are less yes. these days relatively generally speaking yeah, across that is what is reflected so the thing. students are, are a little uh, behind but uh, the otherwise the capacity of the students remains the same okay the uh, only thing is they have they because today the 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 computer is there and i think they they can use computer for learning instead of that they are using it for playing okay, okay. it's one of them but in chemistry computing use usage is only to the limited extent that is should be improved okay so generally yeah, yes, people uh, have not been using it as much in the computational sense uh, yeah, that is one thing second thing is even for search as a search tool mm. they can use only google and all those things that that is not the enough now because the literature is so high so uh, because uh, even if i if i were to if i were to tell you i have been recently writing a book on carbon dioxide to fuels and chemicals because we know very well 
fuels and chemicals can be used to produce carbon dioxide. But okay, so the reverse process. You're reverse right. process. So the, that means we are closing the cycle. So that, so this this literature in the last ten years is enormous. Okay. Okay. That is how to convert. Even though we have not succeeded, still succeeded means in the manufacturing level. But we we have succeeded level in converting few molecules. Okay. Few molecules of CO2 into chemicals, useful chemicals. But this this knowledge must be known to them. Then only they will be able to take take up the challenge and do them. This is only one example. Another example is as you have already said is fuel cells. In the in the case of the fuel cells, the pro problem it does not exist with the ele electrode. The problem exists with the electrode at the oxygen reduction, not on the uh, fuel combustion. So therefore, designing proper oxygen reduction electrode. Is the the question here? Up to now, we have been using only platinum-based electrodes, but now we can use many other materials. One of them is uh, hetero atom, nit nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, boron substituted uh, carbon materials can be easily used for the oxygen reduction reaction. It can be comparable, not uh, not exceeding the platinum, but it is already comparable with the platinum today. With respect to with respect to time, it will be improved. In the then it will be cheaper electrode and the fuel cell will become a reality. So the second thing is as I told you before the storage. Storage also is a very big issue. Uh, the for example supercapacitors. Okay, instead of batteries because battery is a weight weighty substance and the things. So supercapacitors. Supercapacitor also is a. a for possible means of energy conversion device, but only thing is materials is the question. Mm -hmm. Now, in the the material that we are now using is carbon materials or carbon based materials. We will not go into the details of it, so, but we we have to innovatively bring out, as I told you, the carbon materials with these hetero atoms, and also structurally they should be made more stable. Carbon materials are layered materials. Maybe layered materials are possible to use as supercapacitors, but chalcogenides, dichalcogenides, or sulfur containing or phosphorus containing, all these things will be will be in the future will be uh, new supercapacitors. Like that, we can go on talking about it. I mean the materials in the catalysis or NEC. So therefore, what what today is the sci the students, research students should be able to focus on these new materials. And since they have been conventionally taught, they are not able to think the new materials sense. Okay, so so a lot more uh, uh, reading up is required to uh, catch up on materials that are more recently being looked at and yes. uh, picked up. Okay, so of course uh, you already mentioned a lot of examples of uh, where you know uh, maybe there's a direct inter, uh, industry application, and certainly you know petroleum industry is one that you were talking about. Uh, generally, in uh, MS and PhD degrees, we tend to think of research which is, uh, you know, uh, significantly ahead of its uh, time. Uh, so, in this context, from a PhD, uh, MS PhD kind of research activity that get, that takes place, uh, are there? Uh, what, where do you see industry interest in uh, this kind of, uh, you know, in, in a research uh, uh, program kind of uh, activity? Okay, in in, in the industry. Since we are dealing with the, our center is dealing with the, uh, refining industry, the, there are as I told you, we are today refining industry because refining industry is the major industry in India. Uh, nearly 15 refineries are there and all those things. The refining capacity, even though increased, the refining material, the crude oil, is the bottom of the barrel. So therefore, the conversion to useful chemicals is a big problem. Not only useful chemicals, even the waste chemicals that come out, okay, for example, tar or something like that, it is not waste, but it is a is not a high high price commodity. They can be used properly if they can. So all this involves some kind of a refining process. The re refining process means having a crude oil, converting them to the size of the molecule that you want and value added molecules. So this this is called can be isomerization, it can be alkylation, it can be addition, whatever chemical reactions that we have studied in general organic chemistry. But it has to be done with these molecules, which is very big molecules. So therefore, the industry today in, insists on this. The same way drug 
they are drug molecules. Now, you drug molecules, for example, you take a hypertension molecule or something like that, boot synthesis or whatever it is, it all requires five to six steps. These, these things can be today with this type of materials, porous materials, we can make them in single step. Okay. Ibuprofen can be synthesized from a basic molecule in single step. Okay. Today it is produced by five, five steps or six steps. So the cost will come down. Cost only is not the criterion. The, the drugs will be easily available. Okay. So, so therefore, essentially what it means is that we have to reorient our research. Uh, to, we, we, we cannot succeed in one day. Okay, boot synthesis is uh, known for uh, decades. Now, one, if I were to introduce it in one step, everybody will laugh at me. But it is possible. Okay, but to, to economically produce, it has to be did. So, like this, uh, many things can be done. Okay, uh, we, okay. We so ourselves these, yeah. So these are the areas that you feel that uh, you know industry itself is directly interested in in a research program that is uh, ongoing. Yes. And also similarly, if we had research programs in those areas, uh, more industry interaction is uh, likely. So, uh, if you look at the students that graduate, I mean, let's say masters and PhD students when they graduate, uh, what sort of positions uh, do you see them uh, getting in uh, industry or any other uh, circumstance? Okay. Of course, general, in general. Uh, Our center has a, a, a peculiar place, but a chemist in general, they find the uh, opportunities in chemical industries, especially pharmaceutical industries, if he is an organic chemist. If he is a material chemist, means uh, in the material uh, development. But today, India is in a favorable position because all multinationals have got their. Uh, headquarters or semi-headquarters in India. So, the, for example, Shell or uh, Sabic or any anything, okay, GM, GE, whatever thing, even uh, PNG, they are all he here in India. And therefore, they have opportunities there. Uh, many, uh, previously, the, this type of opportunity was not available for in, uh, Indians, in India. Indians, uh, India, they have to only look for uh, research positions abroad or Employment, employment yeah, abroad. abroad. Yeah. Today, equivalent employments are possible in India. So, that is not a problem. As a matter of it, chemists, I don't see any problem in the next 20, 30 years. Okay, that's a very, I think, heartening uh, piece of information for, I think, a lot of students who are in chemistry. Yeah, if, we, if they have the in, uh, necessary inspiration, they can easily fit into any of these things. Okay. Um, in... Uh, the in, let's say you know, on a more mundane uh, note, uh, how often do you feel? I mean, when when students come and you know get into a master's or a PhD program, they uh, one of the things they are often told that you know classroom learning is one, but uh, you know interacting with peers, interacting with your advisor, interacting with your guide, uh, these are things that uh, actually contribute a lot to their learning process. Uh, so, in your experience, uh, what would you recommend as, you know, how often students should be meeting their guides uh, or how that process should go? Okay, this is one of the main issues of Indian education itself, okay. I am sorry to tell this, but it is a fact. For example, if you, uh, our learning, classroom learning is, like the teacher or the professor will come and give like lectures, okay. And he may not be having time to, uh, Establish that it has crossed the barrier of the teach the lecturer to the student. This is uh, the student also is uh, inhibited to ask questions or uh, raise doubts. So this is a very big challenge. So what I suggest thing is the instead of giving lectures and uh, courses, courses should be interactive, more interactive. As a matter of fact, questions can be on both sides. Okay, the teacher also can ask questions instead of delivering the lecture. See, the, previously what was bothering uh, in the lecturing process is covering the syllabus. Now, is covering the syllabus is not at all the criterion. Okay? How you have comprehended the syllabus is the question. Because that is what you are going to make use of in, in your career. <coughs> so, therefore, the classroom means in a, in a lecture hour of 60 minutes, there should be 60 questions across. Okay. It can be across between both of them. That is, that is one thing that has to come in India. In Indian education, 
they, this is not at all. This is over. underplayed. This is quite a bit underplayed. But what about, you know, as a student guide uh, interaction? I mean... Uh, Ga- guide, here, uh, the guide should be available on all the time. All the time, okay. okay. Uh, that is the f- first Easy thing. accessibility of the yeah, guide is a very important uh, thing. And that also, you should treat the students equally. Okay. Uh, uh, because you should not put him in a fearful situation. Okay. Or, or respectful situation. Okay. That the respect should be only inherent. It should not be shown outside. Okay. So that the, makes the interaction the, the more effective. The student should effective. be able to tell him what is inhibiting him. Okay. Sure. That is the, the this, this is in, in Indian situation, this Guru, Guru Shishya pa, pa situation is really that is what is the, the Shishin wa is capable of asking anything to the Guru. Guru also is capable of asking in the Shishya anything. That That is somehow or other in the in-between this has disappeared. Okay, okay. So that is something that's worth uh, revising. Yes. That so, in also in, in a similar, <coughs> sort of in a, in a, in a related sense, uh, uh, there are different ways in which people measure, you know, how uh, students have performed in, you know, research activities. And commonly, uh, we refer to just uh, publications. Uh, over and above publications, are there other ways in which uh, you look at students to uh, uh, measure, uh, you know, how much they have evolved as a researcher? Okay. This is one thing that uh, in our center we are practicing. For example, for example, I will tell you one example. Then will be, uh, and also this example is well known. For example, when ammonia synthesis was uh, proposed by Fritz Sauber, his boss, Ernst, Ernst equation, Ernst put thermodynamics and said it is impossible. So you cannot work on this. But in spite of it, uh, Haber worked on it and uh, got the ammonia synthesis with the BASF. That is not the criterion. If ammonia synthesis were not to be there, world population would be one half or one third. Okay? Because it has provided the food for all the people. That is why world population has increased. Okay. So now, the question is, the same question only we asked. CO2 to chemicals is non-thermodynamically possible. Okay. So, for example, this is the way we came to this CO2 problem. Mm. So, if Haber could do ammonia synthesis, why can't we do carbon dioxide to chemicals? Chemicals, okay. So, this type of questions we ask the students and make them interested in the research. Because these this researchers will not provide, give results immediately. So, they should not get discouraged. They okay. should be willing to face problems. So, like this, today the, the students should be motivated for this. This is only one, one example. Many examples are there. For example, supercapacitors, we, as I told you, the heteroatom substitution in carbon materials is now known. But when we started 20 years back, when we started, nobody even thought that uh, nitrogen can be substituted in carbon. Because okay. nitrogen is a five, 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 fifth valent, carbon is four valent. Four valent, okay. So, such a solid state material is not possible. Even now, many solid state chemists will not agree with that. Okay. But th- that type of things are possible. So, one can un- unconventionally think. Okay. So, you are looking for unconventional thought processes to... Yes. to or induce those processes. Induce those processes. Process. And that, that gives us a sense that they are actually thinking different from, you know, being, uh, you know, put into a streamline and then they are, therefore, that's something that they are uh, learning as a research uh, process. Uh, okay, so that was a very uh, uh, interesting insight on, uh, you know, how uh, they have to think outside of uh, whatever parameters they are conventionally told about and then that helps them grow as researchers. So, I would like to conclude this discussion by asking you this. Uh, th- I'm sure there are a lot of students out there uh, who are considering, uh, you know, advanced degrees in chemistry, uh, master's degree or a PhD degree. Uh, so, uh, uh, what are your words of advice to these kinds of uh, aspiring students uh, who are aspiring for higher degrees in uh, uh, chemistry? Okay. Chemistry is uh, generally uh, considered as a subsidiary science to physics and other things. Physics is more basic than chemistry. Like that, that is what is the people think. But the, as I told you, we have to, the students should have, first thing is that his uh, analytical skills have to come to atomic scale. Not uh, molar or millimolar or micromolar, it has to come to atomic scale. Now, when it, it is coming to the atomic scale, the p- probes also have to change. Okay, for example, electrochemistry, it can now do na- nanoscale. Okay, but what we want is picoscale or even femtoscale. Okay. 10 to the 12 or 10 to the minus 15 molar concentrations. 
so now the, the students should have dynamism in taking up that such challenging things that is the first thing second thing is the chemists are always afraid of mathematics now today mathematics is only uh, even today or even everything mathematics is only a language for non mathematicians okay mathematics is pure mathematics is mathematics for mathematicians but for all others it is only a language if, if i want to say 4 i can say 2 plus 2 is 4 so therefore that, that is how they, it has to be so therefore we should all, uh, embrace it completely. embrace mathematics as a language for the other scientists if, in, if they do that then they will be able to perform as i told you dft or h Uh, artery fog or even self consistent it will become easy okay. but unfortunately our quantum mechanics the people who teach for the chemists they they immediately they go to a second order differential equation and solution of them and all those things instead of the emphasizing the physical significance of the solutions okay so therefore this this type of things they should not take it too much they should look for the analytical solutions uh, of the mathematical expressions okay then they will be able to perform well so i don't think the chemistry or even physics or even uh, natural sciences or physical sciences is a challenging job it is a very in, in, uh, entertaining and interesting uh, job okay so the students should uh, feel Yeah. comfortable e- engineering, or... engineering is one of them i am not denying sure, that sure sure because you are you are doing it hands on the same thing can be done because for example in mof uh, metal organic framework is building a building in the in the with the molecules okay. instead of making a building with brick and mortar so like that for a solids also is building a material only so therefore we, chemistry and generally science can be more interesting than what it is today or what it is maybe perceived to be maybe people perceive more challenges than uh, they immediately recognize the uh, interest in it yes and so uh, an aspiring student i think if they learn to distinguish that and you know put away their fear and embrace it uh, in a more uh, you know whole hearted way they probably will be able to more comfortably fit into a masters or a phd yes. okay thank you very much professor vishwanathan thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be that we could have you it's a privilege that we could have you in this thank uh, discussion thank you very much thank you